Get ready to profit in three, two, one. Hey squad, I'm here today with another special episode joined by Ray Savell. Hello, hello. And I'm Ben Page. And we're going to talk about what is PPC and what is it, how ben? does it work? So let's start and define terms, Ray. Yeah. What is PPC? What does it stand for? Yeah, PPC is pay-per-click. It stands for pay-per-click, and we tend to use it for pay-per-click advertising. But in a sense, somebody places an ad on a page. When somebody clicks it, you then pay for that click, and the advertiser is charged. So that's exactly what PPC stands for. It's a common term in the space where you pay for every click that occurs. Yeah, and it started, I think the term originated in the early 2000s when this was the first and kind of predominant way to do advertising on the internet, on the emergent, you know, commercialized internet that we have today. Um, but now it's a little bit of a misnomer in the sense that people use, especially professionals in our space, use the word PPC to refer to all kinds of digital advertising, including social media advertising. There's a lot there. Amazon, video, native, programmatic. Um, sometimes these all get bucketed into the discipline of PPC. Um, or sometimes people call it paid traffic, paid media, digital advertising, you know, all kinds of synonyms for that. Um, and, you know, ads nowadays can take all different forms right? Not just text, but also image-based shopping ads, banner ads, Gmail ads. Everywhere. Ads everywhere. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> yeah, more ads with time. So why does pay-per-click matter? You know, why, Ray, should someone who is busy running their business or, you know, they're a CEO or they're just in a different discipline entirely, yep. why does this matter? Yeah, I mean, for me, the, the biggest reason why it matters is the speed at which you can deliver results. So, like, in traditional advertising, you may have to put together a message, you'd have to get it out, you'd have to get the billboard put up, the yellow page uh, done, all that kind of stuff. But with pay-per-click advertising, you can make an ad today and really start seeing results the same day, if not you know, the, the next. So based on how effective you are at setting up campaigns and if, you know, traditional marketing concepts, if you're hitting the right person with the right message at the right time, you can start seeing results instantly. So for me, the reason why it matters is the speed in which you can see results. Yeah, that's awesome. You know, in our last episode, we talked about SEO and the reasons why it is important. And we talked about the idea that for the keywords that are important to your business, that could potentially lead to new customers, new sales, and new leads. Your goal should be to maximize your visibility in the search engine results for that page. And we also talked about how the higher up you appear on that page and the number of times you appear will lead to giving you more share, more click share in that search engine result, which is your goal. You want to get more traffic and more leads or sales from those kinds of keywords. And so the the simple fact is that, kind of like we mentioned earlier, there are more ads with time in many search engine results pages. Ads are shown at the very top uh, in the top results. Ads also appear in the maps section, on the shopping tab. You know, they're pretty universal in that regard. And so you have to focus on this discipline as well at least to some level, I think, if you want to get better than average results in this, from search engines specifically. Yep, and people aren't really scrolling when they get to the page. Like I think uh, we have a stat here where 46% of the clicks go to the top three um, paid ads on the search result page. So if you if you want to show up for these commercial intent keywords, the, the ones that are generating revenue, leads, conversions, being in those top spots is really important, and we'll talk more about that here in a few minutes. But it's just crucial to have that visibility when it comes to your paid ads. Yeah, that's that's great. And there's also, in the last episode, we talked about how users frequently begin their journey in trying to solve a problem or answer a question they have with search in search engines. And so another stat is that search ads can increase brand awareness by up to 80%. Um, the idea is this 
halo effect that just by advertising on some important keywords, some relevant keywords, you can increase the number of times, the frequency, uh, the ranking, I guess, is probably the best way to describe it, of your website, your brand, mm -hmm. which can lead to that user as they continue their journey of searching and browsing and scrolling and comparing different information to remember, that's right, that brand was there. I remembered it, and now maybe they'll navigate to your site directly or click an organic result, you know, and so on. So there's a lot of value in doing this, undertaking this, investing in this. You know, one, one stat is that businesses make an average of $2 in revenue for every $1 they spend on Google Ads. Um, and, and I do. I view it as an investment, as SEO is. Yep. So we talked already a little bit about where do PPC ads appear, you know, and specifically, you know, in the search engine results. But, Ray, like, where else can ads appear? And we'll stick mainly to Google Ads, type of advertising today. Yep. So what are the different ways, formats, locations that as a user, I might see ads that are actually placed by an advertiser using Google ads? Yep. Yeah. I mean, we talked about those text ads already that show up on the top of the search engine result page. So we went through that a little bit, but pretty much anywhere on, on Google's and Google properties, ads can show up and they will show up. So shopping ads, they'll show map ads. YouTube is another really big one. It's a video format, obviously. So you can show uh, even text ads, pre-roll, they're called in-stream ads on YouTube. So pretty much any Google property ads can and will show, including Gmail on your Android phone if you're an Android user on the Discover tab. So if you have an Android phone and you swipe over to the left-hand side, I think, um, it's your Discover tab and you start to see um, ads there as well. So all of these ads are bought and delivered uh, via Google ads and you can buy them, uh, again, uh, Google, um, YouTube, Gmail, and then all of the network sites that they partner with as well through their audio, like through their um, display network as well. Yeah, and that, that includes uh, the stats are crazy about how much of the internet it's like at they least have eighty or ninety percent. It's like everywhere, right? And this would include things like news sites, blogs, entertainment sites, even within apps that appear in the Google Play Store, um, are all examples of places where ads you place on Google Ads can actually appear for users. So, you know, ultimately, it's like basically almost anywhere there are people online, you can usually expect there to be some form of advertising present there. Yep. I mean, that's how Google makes all, well, not all, but 90% of their revenue via Google ads. Right. Because, in fact, they, well, this is a whole separate discussion, but we could talk about the moat that they've built around Google Ads. You know, they have multiple services with 1 billion plus users like Android, I believe Maps, Gmail, um, Search, certainly, et cetera, right? YouTube, where like a lot of these are free services that are built around the moat of the advertising engine that feeds the whole yeah. empire, right? So, Ray, how does pay-per-click work? And we could talk about it from different perspectives. So let's put ourselves in the shoes of the business owner listening, the AKA the advertiser. How does it work for them on a very, very high level? Yep. At a really high level, you essentially, it's a self-serve type of platform. So you go and create an account on Google ads, you make the account, you set up your targeting, you create an ad, and then you say exactly what keywords or audiences do you want to serve to? And then those ads start to deliver. And there's a lot more that is behind that, like in the sauce as to like how they can effectively um, deliver. But at a super high level, it's just, again, it's basic marketing concepts. You create an ad account. It's all self-serve. You get your message in, in front of the right person. And then you start to deliver that ad to your audience based on the keywords or audiences you want to target. So on a very high level, uh, imagine it's a flower shop, a local business, a brick and mortar, and they want to start advertising because they've noticed that if they Google their city name plus flowers, you know, or flower delivery plus city or flowers near me, something like that, they're nowhere to be found. And they're like, this is a problem. We want to get some sales from Google. Um, what they could do is go to ads.google.com. They could create a new account. Um, 
if they have one, I'd recommend linking your Google business profile to your Google yep. ads account. And then you could create in this very basic example, say a performance max campaign type, which is a type of campaign where you tell it the geographic parameters. Hey, I want to target a radius that's three miles around my brick and mortar store. I'm going to provide some images, some ad headlines and descriptions, maybe a YouTube video if you're feeling crazy, and also a website URL, you know, superflowers.com, whatever it is. So you build that, that ad creative, that ad unit like that, and then you also give Google some details about the kinds of people you want to reach based on their demographics, based on the kinds of ways they've searched before, if they've been to your website previously or not. And then basically you set up a daily budget, you know, say five bucks and you hit go. Now, yep. like you said, right? I mean, there's so much more, right? From a tracking measurement, the strategy of how to do that targeting and the writing great ads that convert and high quality imagery and all these things. But on a very base level, that's what we're talking about. Yeah. And I mean, one thing I will say about the Google Ads platform is it does do a pretty good job at taking you through all the steps, Ben, that you just went through. It, it kind of sets you up and it says, what what is your main objective? What is the main geographic area you want to go through? So it, it does a pretty good job at holding your hands. What I will say is my recommendation would be for you to start small and figure out, is this actually working for me? Because if you start out too big from a budget standpoint, let's say you're, you know, I've got a $10,000 budget and I want to spend $300 a day and you put that in there right away and one of the settings is <laughs> in, in like set up incorrectly, it's going to lead to a lot of wasted spend. So if you're new to this and if you're doing this yourself, I would, I would really recommend that you start off small and then scale over time. Love that. Yeah. De-risk it. Don't waste dollars unnecessarily. Yeah, because while they while Google does do a good job at holding your hand, they do also make it easy for you to dump budget to somewhere that may not be relevant relevant for your business. Right. And in this performance max example, your ads will be shown on different networks, they're called, or different ad placements across all the inventory that Google has access to. So they'll show up in the search engine results, in the maps, on Gmail, display sites, everywhere. YouTube, Discover tab everywhere. The billboard at your house. Right. <laughs> so there's some, some breadth in that campaign type. So, you know, your goal as the advertiser though, too, is to be as relevant as possible to the user, which you can express through both, you know, the way you target people, uh, the way you message to them and what's present on your website, you know, in your offer essentially. Yeah. I mean, back to the flower shop example really quick without belaboring the point here. If, if, if you don't sell um, lilies and you start serving ads on lilies and your ad copy talks about lilies and your landing page then goes to like roses, for example, it's not going to be relevant to that user. So make sure that whatever you're delivering to the end user, it matches up everywhere. Love it. Consistency, relevance, and, and wherever possible, actually exclude the things that you can't help with that will improve your results drastically. So then from, we talked about this from a, an advertiser's perspective. What about for users? You know, I'm typing in flower shops near me into Google. Some results are loaded there. Um, how does that work, Ray, from that user perspective? Yep. I mean, depending on the search that you do, the search engine result page is going to look different. So in the flower shop example, if you do a near me, you're likely going to see a map at the top of the page versus if you do something like buy flowers or buy bouquet or something like that, you might get like a shopping listing at the top of the page. So from like a user standpoint, based on what you actually search, the SERP is going to look different. The search engine result page is going to look different, but it's it's, I, I'm assuming a majority of the audience has done this where it's you, you see the ad, it'll say sponsored somewhere. You then click on it. That's where the pay per click comes from. The advertiser is then charged and then you, the user are then sent to wherever the advertiser wants you to go, which is most likely their website. Right. And if it's relevant, you make a purchase. And then from that advertiser standpoint, they get that data and they say, oh, great. You know, someone clicked on my ad for the keyword of flower store near me. 
And then they filled out my form or they called me. And then, oh, I found out that that person ended up purchasing flowers for $100. And I paid $5 for the click on that. And I made this kind of money. You know, they're great. Um, that's how it works. And, you know, from Google's standpoint, every time one of these searches happens on Google that returns sponsored results, that returns advertisements, there's an auction taking place behind the scenes. Because in most cases, there's not just one advertiser who wants their ads to show up for that keyword. Yep. Right? And then there's a concept of ad rank. And ad rank is really about how relevant and quality your ads and landing page are and also your bid. And you could argue now how well the advertiser is making use of all the tools that Google's providing to enrich their ad. Yep. So it's kind of a mix. Ad rank is a mix of you know quality and in the historical results you've been getting and how much you're willing to pay for a click on your ad. And then these factors get crunched into a calculation behind the scenes in milliseconds. And that leads to a rank order of, you know, advertisers, if they get to show at all, and if they do, who wins the top spot? Who wins the second and the third spot? And so on and so forth. Yeah, and I think one important call out there is, is a lot of business owners that I've spoken with is like, well, how do I compete with the big box stores? So how, if I'm the flower shop, how do I compete with 1-800-Flowers, for example? They've got hundreds of thousands of ad budget. They've got all these locations. This is exactly where like this ad rank piece comes into play because they may have coverage in Wisconsin and they may deliver to Menominee Falls. But if I'm a local flower shop in Menominee Falls, Wisconsin, and if a user is doing a search for best flowers in Menominee Falls, Wisconsin, an ad for 1-800-Flowers might show up, but my site has Menominee Falls all over it. It has the location on it. The ad is going to have Menominee Falls in it. So it's kind of like the relevancy piece where um, back in the day, whoever had the biggest budget would likely you know, dominate that space. But now this is how you can really compete with those big box stores is by having more relevancy and including those types of things. Because when when things go out to auction and this ad rank shows up, Ben, that you're mentioning, that is how you truly compete with those big box stores. Yeah, it's a great point. So you can carve out your niche if you have certain advantages or if you make yourself more relevant, more helpful, faster um, for that user than the large competitor could do. Mm -hmm. So that's great. So it's all about being relevant. Um, and Ray, you already mentioned how to succeed at PPC. Ultimately, you want to start small and expand. Um, other principles. What about you know tracking and measurement or any anything else come to mind, Ray, that would help someone who's thinking about doing this? I guess you could say start out with keyword research through the keyword planner tool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, depending on. Depending on your business, you may have a really good idea of exactly what keywords you want to go after, but Google has tools like a keyword planner where you can go there and you can do some research as to like what's getting the highest volume or where what are different iterations of keywords that I can go after. I, I think like the biggest thing for me outside of like starting small when it comes to how to succeed at PPC is it's not, I know some people may think of it as a set it and forget it type of thing where it's like, hey, I set my budget, great, now I'm good. The first couple times that you go in there, you probably want to have some regular cadence of checking in and maybe it's monthly or it's weekly or, or whatever. Hourly. <laughs> Every minute. Um, but, but what you're really looking for is this campaign type that you set up. Google has like an insights tab, especially for like these Pmax um, areas. It'll give you an idea of like the types of searches that it's going after. And if if there's some disconnect there, again, back to like the Lily's example where it's like, and this probably isn't real, but but Google's like delivering all of the traffic towards like Lily's, like, oh, they think you're selling just Lily's all day. And it's like, well, heck, I don't sell this type of product. That's where you're going to want to pivot in some way. So just it's very important that you go in there and you don't have to spend all day, but it's like, what are the key insights from this campaign? What is it telling me? And if it's not what I want, how do I pivot as quickly as I can or find somebody who can help me pivot? Yeah, yeah, that's a great point. And we talked about the importance of an ongoing mindset 
of, you know, monitoring, running experiments, you know, improving as your goals change, changing strategy and targeting, learning about who your best customer is over time and then better trying to serve them. And as your products and services change, reflecting that in your advertising and so on. So it is this ongoing, evolving process. Um, but I do think, you know, right, like nailing the setup, doing the research, like actually, you know, starting with typing a few sample keywords you think could be relevant into Google. What kind of results are shown? You know, what are the ads saying for those? What are the organic results saying? What are the, the websites, if you click on those, you know, the websites that you get led to, what are those? How are they laid yep. out? How fast are they? What do they say? Doing that research and then bringing that into this keyword planner tool on Google. So after you sign up for your account, you can go to the tools section and keyword planner. And in this tool, you can enter in a few sample phrases or keywords. And like Ray said, it will give you suggestions of other keywords like it. And you can also find the search volume on a monthly basis for those keywords in the geography that you specify. So you think it defaults to your country, Ray, but then you, yep. could, you could edit it and say, I want to know how many of these are happening in the state of Wisconsin. You know, fantastic. Well, hey, Ray, there are 90 searches per month for Lily shops in Wisconsin, you know, great. And, and also here's how much an average cost per click on one of those ads will be. And with that, you can sort of build your plan, build your roadmap for how to best use your budget. Um, and then, right, build it out, start small and expand. Yep. But if you need guidance or you have questions on this process, you can reach out to us. We're happy to chat about it or give you the help you need. So you can find us at 2100digital, 2100digital.com, and hit contact us. Thanks for listening. See you, squad.